You're listening to the Wired for Impact podcast. Airdropping. Can you share very briefly what airdropping is, why there's opportunity there? And I, I'm hearing crazy stories from mm-hmm. some of my friends. The last bull run, uh, this guy just said, like, I just made a hundred grand. Like somebody literally just gave me a hundred grand. I was like, what? How, what? How does that work? So uh, <laughs> yeah, airdropping. Let's, yeah. let's talk about that for a second. I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention that in the passive income conversation because it's somewhat related to that, but it's a little different. So airdropping is basically, okay, so you know how we talked about IPO and ICO, which is initial coin offering. Airdropping is an alternative to a project having an ICO. So, you know, with an ICO, there are uh, private sales of tokens, which is actually a big part of the Ethereum gate conspiracy and manipulation was that they had these private sales of the Ethereum token um, with these big anonymous whales who were able to come in and, and buy it before their ICO. And the SEC basically gave them a free pass on that where they didn't with other cryptos. So there was some mm-hmm. collusion. So a lot of these groups now, for the regulatory reason to start, are choosing to do airdrops because basically it's donating their supply of their new project. So say say I come up with a new project, right? Say I create a new crypto. I can ICO it and go through all the regulatory hoops and risks and all the gray area because it's not solidly defined, all the regulations. And so you, you leave yourself open to a lot of BS, basically. Or you can skirt, sideline all of that nonsense and donate your tokens to the community where there's no sale So there's no regulatory compliance that needs to be met in terms of token sales. Mm. And so the way it works is that projects will generally donate those tokens to communities of existing projects that they are interested in or think will find their project valuable. So I'll give you an example. Flare token that we were talking about earlier with the Flare networks, they did this with the XRP community. So there was an airdrop for XRP holders where people who held XRP on a certain date, which was like uh, December 2020, I believe it was, however much XRP you held December 2020, you would get a relative amount of these flare tokens to whatever you had in XRP, certain percentage. And you had you have to hold that XRP on a certain wallet or certain exchange or something like that, correct? Yeah, in many cases, you have to have it. So if you have it on a wallet, you're always good to go because that's the most sovereign way. If you have your tokens on an exchange, that's where it comes down to the exchange, whether or not they're going to keep those tokens for themselves or if they're going to actually give it to their clients, which pisses a lot of people off when they don't because like Coinbase was one of those that notoriously did not distribute the Flare airdrop. I don't know if they might have eventually, but for a good chunk, I know for sure they didn't. And people were getting very upset with them because they're like, hey, give us our money. Like, stop holding it hostage, right? But they don't have to because there's there's no legal repercussion. There's no, Jeez. there's nothing that tells them they have to. Uh, but basically, if, if these airdrops become a valuable network like Flare has, Flare has become, I believe it's in the top 50 tokens right now. And it's sitting at like 33 cents or something like that right now. So if you got Flare tokens, they might not have been valuable right when they came out. But if you held those tokens, the value would arrive eventually. And particularly with Flare, there's actually still an opportunity to get this airdrop because they changed the airdrop guidelines where it used to just be for XRP holders. They actually did a governance vote, which is one of the cool things about crypto is that the community can vote on the direction of how they want things to play out. It's not just this centralized top down, this is how it's gonna be. So there was a governance vote and people decided that they wanted to shift the airdrop. So people who weren't holding XRP at that time could still participate in it at all. And Mm so now there's actually still, you can still capitalize on this. And it's one of the biggest passive incomes that we're doing right now in our academy is that there are monthly flare airdrops for the next three years, or now it's two years, three years total, or a year in, two more years of monthly airdrops where you will get a certain percentage back every month relative to how much you have in flare. I think right now it's sitting around 4% a month. It was initially 20% when it first started, and it's gradually gone down. But imagine getting 20% back a month in mm-hmm. your token. And at the time, the price was going down because it was inflating, basically, but it found its bottom. It's coming back up. And so now everyone who held those tokens through that market 
are, you know, reaping those rewards. And so this is one of the things if, if people join the academy, we can teach them how to do still take advantage of this and get those airdrops. But then after that two year period, supply is fully distributed, it's done and no more airdrops. So comes down to the different networks, how they do it. Some are just, here's your tokens all at once. Others are, we're going to do it over a year or a couple of years. So fascinating, man. It's such an exciting new ecosphere. Thank you for listening to this episode of Wired for Impact. If you're interested in creating and expanding your impact, be sure to visit us online at impactnow.com.